Hey guys, welcome back to Sustainable Living. Today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you guys along on show you our earth block, our compressed earth block. So I'm gonna do a couple different videos about compressed earth block. But today, what I wanna do is I wanna show you these compressed earth blocks that I had left over. And they've been setting out in the weather for four years. Before I start moving these blocks, I'm gonna show you what the erosion has done to these blocks. But you can see that after four years of being exposed to the weather, that the blocks are still holding up fairly well. Obviously, I wouldn't use these blocks. These were just leftovers. But this just shows you the exposure and what can happen to your blocks in the weather. And you can see on these bottom blocks, these had 10% Portland. And look at that, after four years, the 10% Portland is still really holding up really well. Very strong, sturdy block. Now, some may think, well, in Arizona, you don't get any bad weather. Well, in Arizona, believe it or not, we do get snow. We get uh, really cold, freezing weather. And uh, so these blocks have been exposed to all this over the last few years and you can see how well they're holding up these 10 percent blocks in fact that brings me to my my first point uh if i was to do it over again i would take uh, my block and i would do 10 percent all the way up through my wall and not do five percent about uh i was about halfway up through my wall probably three quarters up up the wall when i started doing the um the five percent now the recommendations that we had we were to use uh, only 10 percent for i think the first uh, five to six courses and then after that you could even just use plain block and with no portland but we opted to put portland in all of our block but like i said if i had to do it over again i would do 10 percent in all my block all the way to the top of my wall I wanted to show you this we're uncovering this top pallet and we're picking out the blocks that were in the center of the pallet that were less exposed to the freezing they were still going to be exposed to moisture because the moisture would seep down to the blocks but look at this this is a prime example of when you build your building why you want to put a roof on it and get your blocks covered as soon as you can because the, the worst thing that could happen to your this material is erosion other than that, this stuff will last forever, in my opinion. So right here, this block was covered. This is towards the center of the pallet. And then this side was exposed. And look how this kind of just eroded away. But this is almost as good as it was when it was pressed out. So this is a prime example of your block will hold up, but your primary thing that's going to affect you is the erosion, freezing, and thawing to deteriorate your blocks. But look at this block right here. This was towards the center, and this block is almost like it was when it was pressed out. Set aside the corners have chipped out a little bit, but that is a very strong block still. All right, this is what we've got. We got a bunch of 5% blocks that have absolutely just completely crumbled. They were on top of the pallets though. We've got a few of the 10% that uh, have broken in half, but mostly they're all the 5%ers. We've got a few of the half blocks that uh, are somewhat still intact, but I want to show you these 10% ones. Look at this. So where this block was exposed to the weather, the edges froze and kind of deteriorated away, but the core of the block is still intact. That's what you have, a solid block after four years of being exposed. And that was on the side of the pallet. So you can see a lot of the edges have crumbled off where they've got moisture in them and they froze 
and basically just the natural erosion process that happened to these blocks. So the whole idea of me showing you this is, I don't know if this is going to excite you or discourage you with this product, but to me, being exposed like this shows you just how durable this material is. I mean, if you had lumber out in the, uh, in the, uh, in the yard for four years, it would be warped, it'd be faded, it'd be starting to rot. So anything exposed to the elements is going to have problems. But this just shows you how durable this, equi this, uh, this material is. So some of these blocks I would have no problem using again. Not all of them, but uh, I would definitely pick through them. But this is just kind of a real example of this block and its durability. All right, so what I have here is this is some fine dirt that I had left over when I uh, sifted the dirt to make my slurry mix when I, when I would uh, lay my block. And I'm gonna show you how to uh, mix this up and how to lay a couple blocks. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this up to roughly to a, a fairly runny to somewhat thick pancake batter. And then we'll use that to set the block. making that slurry mixture obviously you're not going to be mixing it in a small container like that you're going to have it in a five gallon bucket and probably have some type of drywall paddle to really mix up a five gallon bucket at a time so you can work it okay so what you're going to do is you're going to have your stuff ready and film it down right here and you're going to put it on your block and just kind of you want it enough on there make sure you have no rocks in there that uh, so it all will go in there. And then you take your block and you set it on your joint, wiggle it back and forth and set it there. Grab your next block, squeeze it down so it gets all the way exposed. And that same here. And that is your wet set. Now what you want to do is once this, uh, give these a few minutes to set and these blocks will marry, you can already see it is not wanting to move. Just within that few seconds of placing that block with that wet mixture that it marries the two blocks together. The clay sucks that moisture and just really marries the block. And that was the selling point for me. When Now, some people will dry stack these blocks. I know that uh, I think that's part of some codes that you can do that. But I never did feel good about that. After seeing my friend wet stack his and just seeing how hard it is, you can't, you can't even move these. That's how fast those blocks have married together. Then it was a no-brainer for me to do the wet stack. Obviously, when you're setting these, you want to make sure you're still level on top. The, you know, the same standards of block laying, you wanna make sure you're level on the wall, you're level on your plane, and then to continue on. And so some of the things you wanna do before you lay your next set, so if you're coming on this wall going this direction, you'll have this dry set of mud right here. You'll obviously want to uh, uh, scrape that, but you can then put that back into your, your, uh, your mud there, and then Get ready to set your next line of mud and you only pour as much mud as that you can work the block so if you're quick you can probably put five or six block on there and then just pour a big old string of mud out i'm going to lay the the next two courses we're going to stack this up pushing down and just wiggling it back and forth to get that mud 
to fully get around that block. Now, when you're laying this block, obviously the reason why you made it a fine mixture is because you don't want any aggregate in there. Can you imagine if you had a rock in there and then you're trying to lay a block? It's almost like a, like a, like a marble and it won't set right and it'll throw your block completely off. So you want something that is completely fine with no aggregate in it. And sometimes your blocks will crumble a little bit. So you're always wanting to have a broom and sweeping off your block. So it's a, so it is a clean surface when you lay your block. But when you're done with laying your walls, you can come through and just kind of scrape your walls so you get a clean look. Now you saw when I laid that, there's gonna be a little bit of material that's gonna come down into these two cracks here. That's okay, make sure you put plenty of, of material so it'll go down between the cracks of those blocks. So that'll help it marry in between. But the main part you're wanting to worry about is the top. So I will lay this last block and I'll show you one last time. That's all I have. I would put more on there if I had it. Here we go. Squeeze it on there. You can take this extra stuff if you want and put it in those cracks if you wanted to, if that bothered you. Make use of it. This is the hydraulic side, this side right here. This is where the piston was pushing against the dirt. And then this side, you can see where it's kind of eroded a little bit. This is a little bit of the more weaker side of the block where this dirt was being pushed like this. Now this is, like I said, is the stronger side of the block. So when you lay your block, you do wanna make sure that your hydraulic end is then on this block is the hydraulic end that is basically matching this end right here. So you have a strong, weak, strong, weak block. This is the compressed side, and then this is the weak side. See how it's eroded? And then you look down here, this is also the weak side here. So you just wanna pay attention to your, which side you're laying the block. Now sometimes you kind of th uh, it gets thrown off when you're laying the block uh, and you kind of throw off that pattern. But uh, you'll notice when you're making your blocks, uh, the block will have a different texture to it. And you'll just kind of take a mental note as you do that. But that is one thing you do want to do with your walls. We're going to go ahead and tear down this little miniature wall and go ahead and put it back on the pallets. I'm going to show you how difficult it is to pull these blocks off. So if you hit it like this, it's the whole system is wanting to move. You can see, I'll put all this pressure on this one side and it'll probably lift all these blocks up. And see how, see that? Look at that. Show my hands up here. Look how much pressure that is. Just a quick note on those blocks that uh, I laid for you guys. So you get a perspective when I was putting all that pressure on that top block, each one of those blocks probably they weigh roughly 20 to 25 pounds. And I had anywhere from six to seven to eight blocks there that I laid. So that gives you a rough estimate of, that was probably about anywhere from 175 to 200 pounds that I had levered on the top of that block to show you the strength of that grab. Just a quick note I thought I'd point out to you guys. So in order to really get them loose, that shows you the, the side strength of the sheer strength of this wall. But if you twist it, you typically can get them off. You can, <sighs> still, <sighs> golly, there we go, we broke loose. So if you actually uh, misset a block and you needed to do it, you could then just come in, scrape the top of that block off, and you are not wasted your block. See that? And you just clean that block off. That's why you're clean that block right off. And that block is still good to go. There we go. Finally got that. So 
So what we have here is we have a, this was a, an old metal uh, sheeting that we got from a pig farm that they were tearing down. Picked up a lot of these panels. And uh, so I put two of them together and you can see how um, finely woven this is together. And this worked out really well to sifting out the dirt and giving me the right size of material that I needed. We don't have a shaker to put on it. I just have a kid with a shovel and we would just bang this, uh, this, this metal to help shake the dirt through. And then once this side was completely full, I would come in with the tractor and scoop the dirt that I needed to mix in my Portland and go from there. Now, in order to make my slurry mixture, what I would do is I would get some aluminum uh, window screening material and I would put that on top of this, this screen and pin it down. And then I would take my recently sifted dirt and I would pull it all out, put it in another pile, and then I would rerun that dirt over that aluminum screen and that would give me my fine that I needed to make my slurry mixture. So that was uh, a tip that I used to get a large quantity of that slurry mixture and get it all mixed once and pretty much almost have all your dirt ready for the whole build of the house. So you're not mixing it every time you, or sifting it every time you uh, are wanting to lay a course of block. All right, so what are a couple of the things I would do different? What I would do different is what I'm doing right now is I'm starting to stucco my house and I have foam board that I am uh, uh, stapling into the side of my walls and I'm going to put stucco on the house, uh, which actually has been a, a tremendous uh, help. If you know about thermal mass, that heat will collect in those blocks and it'll travel throughout the block. This last winter putting that uh, insulation has really helped hold in the uh, the coolness and the heat and uh, not that we had any major problems the year before but I've also I've noticed there is a major consistency in our temperature by doing that so in order to put the stucco on what I would have done different when I laid my block is that I would have put uh, wire through my block as you can see when you lay your block you could cut some galvanized wire to whatever length that you need to have it stick out between that course that you lay. And obviously that block would be underneath holding it there. And then you would also have that, those two wires sticking out the backside in which then when you put your uh, stucco wire, you could then tie this to your stucco wire and then you wouldn't be shooting nails into your block, creating a possible compromise to the integrity of your block. Uh, that would be one of the things that I would do different, spend a little more time and put the wires through uh, the block. What that would then do, would, it would create a basket effect. And if you're in a, a seismic area, then that will help hold your wall together. That's it for this video, guys. But I just wanted to share some of my thoughts with you guys. I've been seeing such a demand for information on this. I know when I was getting ready to build my house. I was scouring YouTube and scouring the internet and uh, it just seemed like there was only a few select people that had information on this. And uh, I'm not an expert on this material. Please do not make me an expert or think that I'm an expert. This is just one man building a home for my family so I can be debt free and live my life the way I want it to live, the way I think life should be lived and not be worrying about debt and payments and all those things. And so this material was most suitable for me. Also guys, give me a comment below if you like this video. I'm, I'm monitoring my channel and I'm seeing that I've got a lot of activity going towards uh, earth block, compressed earth block. And I'm probably gonna probably make some more videos on this and share it with you guys. And so give me comments below if you wanna see more stuff like this. I've also had many comments about my spirituality when we first started this uh, project. I would like to share my story with you more completely, but I'd be curious to see uh, your interest if you'd like me to tell you my story from, uh, from a spiritual perspective and how we were guided through the building process. And it's something that means a lot to me. But if it's an interest to you, Maybe I'll make a video, I'll sit down with my wife and we'll do a video and we'll tell you more of our story. So give me a comment below. 
thumbs it up if that's something you want to do if you want me to do and uh, we'll get something cooking for you on uh, in that realm if that's what you'd like so talk to you guys later remember like subscribe follow us check out our other videos we've got a lot of other good stuff about gardening you know fishing you spending time with family wood cutting just stuff that we enjoy i hope that you find it enjoyable too and we'll catch you on the next video thanks guys